Right, you ready? Sitting up straight then. The captain said aye aye, the captain said aye aye. Stand up straight and don't be late, the captain said aye aye. The captain said aye aye, the captain said aye aye. Stand up straight and don't be late, the captain said aye aye. What we did over the last few years here, we actually looked at how our English teaching was going, our literacy work, and we found that we were not doing so well in writing as we were in reading. And one of the things we felt that was holding children back was their lack of phonics skills. So we looked into the way we were teaching phonics, and what we found here was that we weren't teaching it very well and that we needed to have some more systematic approaches to it. So we brought in um, a whole programme of work into the school where children were taught systematically their phonics from the very beginning, starting with some very early work in nursery and then carrying that on into foundation too. I currently teach phonics on a daily basis um, in a dedicated uh, phonics session. I use the uh, progression in phonics um, booklet for their um, warm-up work. Then I use the Jolly Phonics uh, system where they learn a new letter sound every day. Where did we go last week? Hands up. Where did we go? Um, to the Maritime Museum. We did. We went to the Maritime Museum. Well, believe it or not, I went back to the Maritime... I loved it so much. I went back to the Maritime Museum at the weekend. And do you know what I saw there? I saw a real sailor in his navy blue uniform. And with that sailor were four or five small boys and girls that we call cadets. And that big sailor was training his cadets. And he would say, sit up straight. Do you know what the cadets said? Obviously, when a, a new phonic is taught, it's got to be embedded, and that has to happen throughout the day. It might not be that very day, but throughout the next few weeks, that phonic will be referred to. Every time he said, sit up straight, they went, aye, aye. <laughs> Tie the knots. Aye, aye. <laughs> then he said, scrub the deck. What did they say? And what else might he have said to them? What other command might, Victoria? Uh, he might have said, put your hands in your laps. Hands in your laps, cadets. Aye what aye. do you think they said? Aye, aye. And you're absolutely aye. right. It aye. is a letter aye. sound. It might be brought out in all sorts of ways. It could come out of the reading children are doing, and teachers and TAs are highlighting that particular phonic in the reading they're doing with children. Perhaps they're modelling some reading, and then that would be highlighted as well. Perhaps also it comes into the play, into the role-play areas. It might come into something they're having in the, in the room, like a pirate ship or whatever they're working on. But it's embedded throughout the weeks that follow. I want the biggest pens that you can imagine. Are you ready? No. Massive, massive eye. And again, let's do a great big one. Let's pretend we've got those great big paintbrushes in our hand, shall we? And we're on the wall outside. Are you ready with the paintbrush? Don't forget that. And Because we know how to do an E and we know how to do an E. And together, I've forgotten already. What sound do they make? I, I, thank you, I. And they very, very quickly feel that they can write, they feel that they um, can um, make meaningful marks on paper that other people can read, and they feel very proud of it. How about that little palm pilot? Should we write some magic writing on there too? That's that, our little secret computer. Ready? Have you got one? Did it. Done it. What I would do in my um, planning is the six areas of learning um, in the foundation stage. They have uh, more or less dedicated areas um, in the classroom. So, for example, the writing area would have some sort of stimulus where the children could um, do free writing and feel that what they've learnt either that day or that week or up to now, that they have um, 
an opportunity to practice and reinforce. Um, we're doing a pirate theme at the moment. So they uh, annotate their own maps, they sign in to the captain's logbook. I try and get as much writing and reading material into those areas. Similarly in the maths area. So although it's, it is free play and they can use it as they feel fit, I do guide their, their learning in those areas. Because I can see there's two thighs, so it's ten legs. Did you go hungry in a minute? You're gonna go grab it, grab it, grab it, yeah. Die. Our children are learning in a number of ways, really. They're learning in a multisensory way because we obviously want all of that to come into the phonics teaching. I also wanted it to be exciting. I didn't want to see children static and sitting on the carpet. And I also wanted to see children really enjoying what they were doing, uh, because phonics can be enjoyable and uh, exciting. And that was how we went about deciding on the methods we would use. Very quickly, we're going to put some letter signs down on the floor. Let's have a look and quickly shout them out. Ah! In the third summer term, what we do is we consolidate um, the work that we've been doing during the year and we keep uh, the work active. We might use the outdoor area uh, in the reception or we might use the school hall and they especially like a game called Full Circle where they, their skills are actually all brought together, where they are segmenting and blending words. It's an active game, they all have a part. And it's not just an active game, they also support each other. So those children who have been very successful at learning their phonics do nudge the others when it's their turn and make sure that the word makes sense and that it's, a, it's fun for everybody. I can only say I've been dumbfounded at the progress the children have made. Uh, we were very, very concerned about the writing and reading gap, and now we have noticed. And also, I think what really worried us was the fact that some children wouldn't commit to paper. And what it has completely done is empowered children to commit to, to paper, to write their ideas down on whiteboards, on paper, in sand, and there's no hesitation in writing. They're very excited by writing. And when we do the E, do we want footballs? No. <laughs> what do we want? Little tiny. Yeah. That the boy boys playing football on a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the most marked um, improvement is in boys, um, very quickly picking up um, letter sounds, picking up um, reading skills, and picking up um, writing skills. Boys are working at the same level as girls. They're excited by the learning, they enjoy the way we're teaching it, and so they are writing much quicker than they did before. I've noticed a tremendous improvement in the way that children accelerate in their writing and in their reading. It's also given us a structure to help parents, because before parents were floundering, and they didn't know, how do we help our children at home? But by having a systematic approach and showing parents very clearly how we're doing it now and giving them that input and taking things home to them that they understand how to help at home has really made a difference to children's learning. At the beginning of the educational year, what I um, always do is I hold um, an open meeting for parents. I think it's very important to get them on board at the beginning. They do a lot of reinforcing um, at home. They're obviously very, I think every parent's very interested in um, what their child's doing at school. and. I give them packs um, that they can use with their child at home. So they're also, they're understanding um, the synthetic phonic approach and they're working through it themselves. I've taught in the a reception class for um, the past five years, but up until then I was um, in the nursery class of the school and um, with my training, Phonics and writing and reading were a total no-go area in the nursery. So when I stepped into the reception uh, role, I felt quite de-skilled. I didn't have any phonics tools in a, in a kit bag that I could take out 
and use. So I was very keen um, to react to the suggestions of colleagues when they mentioned the Jolly Phonics. I thought, well, a tool is better than no tools. And I thought, I'll trial it for a year, and if it fits, then I'll go with it. So I did trial it for a year, and I was quite skeptical, I have to admit. Um, I was very skeptical, in fact. But the children were so excited. Obviously, for um, early years teachers, there is that feeling, should they uh, take a systematic approach? Because if they have come through a background of free play and not having children sitting down or perhaps listening or perhaps doing a systematic approach to their learning, it can be a learning curve. But what has really transformed that thinking is results and that children can enjoy themselves. And I think that is key. What we want is our small children to enjoy themselves in their literacy hours. Having looked through the Rose Report, um, what I would say that I think we're doing and have been doing a lot of, if not all of, um, his recommendations um, before the publication of the report. Um, we have um, employed the synthetic um, phonics approach. It's a multi-sensory approach. It's regular, it's fun. We're looking for treasure, not namby-pamby flowers. <laughs> Looking for treasure, looking for treasure. <laughs> Squeaked a voice. <laughs> Who's copying me, growled the captain. They like to second guess me. If I Even sometimes when I'm uh, reading a story um, and they'll go, oh, it's a letter sound, it's a letter sound. And I say, no, actually, it's not a letter sound. Oh, no. They always think when I start a story, it's going to be a jolly phonics letter sound, so they all get very excited. Go home. Squawked a voice. <laughs> Captain Deadeye drew his pistol and pointed at his men. No one's going anywhere except forwards. Um, and I think from the work that um, I w I'm doing today, I think also that it comes over that the children enjoy it. And that it's, it's very empowering for them. They feel in control of something. They feel that they can put things together, take things apart. They can manipulate um, letter sounds successfully. Obviously now the Jim Rose report has come out and uh, a survey was done with some of it taking place here and we were very interested on how that would impact on our teaching. That's one sound and the sound is... I. I. So off we go try again. That's I. What would that be? Tie. Tie. Dad wears a tie, doesn't he, when he goes to work? Of course, we've got a lot to assimilate in that report. It's only fairly new. But on first readings, what we're finding is a lot of what Jim Rose is saying is what we're actually doing here, and that has really given us even more feeling of empowerment because he is talking about multisensory approaches, systematic approaches, giving it a designated time, the leadership being involved and knowing what's going on. So all of those things are things that we felt Yes, we're doing that. And it, it, it has empowered us, really, to say, yes, we were going the right way. And some of the points in his report, we can even add to other work we're doing and, and take it further. Ma? Oh. Ow. Mouth. Mouth. Should we give it to him? Yeah. You think he's earned that fish? Yeah. La? Ow. Ow. Da. Lau. Well done. Hi, easy. The captain said, I, I, the captain said, I, I, stand up straight and don't be late. The captain said, I, I, stand up straight and don't be late. The captain said, I, I.